All right, so Oshkosh 2023 out here at the Warp Drive booth. I haven't been by here before, but I've seen them on lots of home-built aircraft, so I thought it was time to find out some more information here. So here with Kelly, I'll have him introduce himself, then we'll get into it. Sure. Uh, my name's Kelly. I'm with Warp Drive Propellers. Uh, owner of the company and been with the company since I was like six years old. So I've been to Oshkosh many times, and I'm sure many of you have met me at the booth. And uh, yeah, happy to be here and talk to you. So family-run business, you've taken over the last uh, six years. What are your, your thoughts and um, uh, future goals for the company? Sure. I think as many of our customers know, uh, Warp Drive has been the same for a long time. Um, and that doesn't mean it's bad. Lots of people love the product, um, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, we're looking to add and expand and grow uh, without leaving the tried and true behind. So there's things that make a Warp Drive a Warp Drive. Um, and I grew up understanding why people like the product, um, and I don't want to abandon that and leave it behind. But uh, yeah, we do want to adapt and grow uh, and change as the market's changing. Okay. So let's jump right into the construction of these. Uh, what are they made out of and kind of what is the, the construction process? Sure. Uh, so in the early days, uh, the company started in 88. Uh, you might have some original blades and they started out, there was a fiberglass version. Uh, it moved to Kevlar. Uh, there was a foam core at one, one point. Uh, all those blades were recalled in the early years uh, and they, they switched to carbon fiber uh, a long time ago. So now it's a solid carbon fiber blade. Uh, it's not foam filled, it's not hollow, there's no wood, uh, it's carbon all the way through. Uh, and we get a lot of advantages from doing that. Okay, so the uh, the blades are all carbon and then the, the hubs are? Uh, yeah, they're machine billet aluminum. Uh, we source all our materials domestically. So all the hub aluminum is ultrasonically tested at the mill. Uh, we pay a little extra for that, but we assure that the aluminum is void free. All of our hardware is domestic. The carbon is domestic. The nickel leading edge is domestic. Um, anytime we can, uh, we're an American company, uh, and we like to support that, and that's part of what we do. Okay, so the uh, the additional material here, you added uh, the nickel. What does that do for the longevity of the blade or performance of the blade? Sure, if you're in uh, water, ice, sand, uh, tall grass, highly abrasive conditions, uh, we don't make you buy it, but it's highly, highly recommended. You see metal leading edges on most propellers uh, and there's a reason for it. So we offer it if it's something you have a budget for and feel like you need uh, and we have it's an option. Uh, if it's not in your budget and you don't want to pay for it, uh, we'll sell you a blade without it. And lots of people fly without it because they're never in those conditions and it doesn't make sense for them. So many of you have seen as you go to these shows, uh, people advertising or showcasing two blades, three blades, four blades, all the way up to like six or eight blades. Can you tell me the advantage or disadvantage of running more blades and like what's the optimum, I guess, based on horsepower or the speed that you're running? Sure. Uh, well, optimum would be one. Uh, we don't make that here. Uh, so as you add blades, uh, you, you technically get less efficient. Um, for the profile that we have, uh, we, we offer propellers to lots of different horsepowers. And so sometimes we just need to add a blade to absorb the power of the power plant. Um, with a two blade, we'll typically go up to 80 horse. Uh, when we start getting 95 to 100, uh, we tend to recommend a three blade on most applications that just makes sense. Um, it weighs a little more and it might not be theoretically as efficient, uh, but it performs better. So it's the one that you want and it, it makes sense. Um, our blade counts go up. So here at the show in the aircraft market, uh, we're doing a two, three and a four, but in the airboat, uh, we go 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, eight blade counter rotating. And uh, so, yeah, they grow from there. But, but here at the show, three is the most common for us. Okay. So the blade um, cord is pretty much like the profile of the airflow is pretty much the same. So if you want to bite more air, you add more blades. Correct. Essentially, yep, yep. Sometimes you just have to. If you don't, then the, the pitch of the blades will get too high and the propeller will want to be propelling the aircraft faster than it wants to go. Um, so we match that with the airframe uh, and the reduction ratio, if, depending on what the um, reduction unit is and, and those specifications. Uh, so we make it, it all works together to determine what we provide. And all of these blades um, with the hub are ground adjustable, correct? Correct. Um, so fixed pitch, ground adjustable. Uh, when you buy a propeller from us, the tool uh, that's used to set the pitch comes with it. Uh, it's 
fairly simple tool. Uh, I know lots of people out there use it, um, uh, whether you own a warp drive or not. And just briefly, without going into a lot of detail, what is that process? Is there like a, a measurement on the hub that you kind of clock each uh, blade to, or how does that done? We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, and so much more. Uh, we call it a protractor. It's a it's a manual tool. It's got a it's square, uh, so meaning 90 degrees on a couple planes. It clips on the end of the blade, and you're setting the tip angle relative to the hub face. And so you don't have to level your aircraft when you do it. Um, it's 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 pretty straightforward, uh, and the instructions are online. There's some guys that done videos online, uh, but once you do it the first time and go, it clicks in your head. You, it's pretty straightforward. So what, other than the uh, the blade count on your hub, um, what are the options uh, with like painted tips, the nickel, and, and that kind of stuff? Sure. Uh, so blade options, uh, the nickel and the tapered tips uh, and the painted tips, that's really the only options. Um, our pricing is not determined by the diameter, so whatever diameter you need. Because they're solid, we can cut them to any diameter you require. So we do quite a bit of matching uh, to ducts, ducts. And so if you have, a, oftentimes if you're running a duct, you want a very close tip tolerance to the duct that you're running in. And because they're solid, we can trim them to the exact diameter that the person who's designing that wants. Um, they'll even match the curvature and the radius of that duct uh, in the ends of the blades. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's handy uh, when you need to do something like that. Uh, so you, you talked about trimming, and we talked off camera about this for a minute too. Uh, one of the advantages of having a completely solid carbon fiber blade is it almost acts like a metal blade, where if something happens, you can do what? Yeah, you can you can customize it. Uh, so oftentimes, if if you're experimenting, you don't always know what diameter uh, will result in the performance that you're looking for, and if you're doing something custom and we've never done it before we have lots of experience and we can help that we can pull from but if you think it's gonna require a 69 and a half you might buy a 71 inch diameter and just whittle it down sand it down and based off the performance that you're looking for you can tailor that so you get the takeoff and you get the cruise at the pitch and the airspeed that you want um, and if it wasn't solid you couldn't do something like that all right, let's talk about uh, kind of the entry level price points and then up uh, to your, your, your top of the line or whatnot options of, of everything. And obviously we're, we're July 2023, things change almost monthly these days, but uh, for the moment, what are we looking at? Yeah, so a two, blade, a two blade base price is right at $850. Um, so that's the hub, the two blades, uh, the hardware that clamps the blades into the hub well, with the pitch setting tool. The options we talked about, the nickel and the taper, um, the painted tips, that, that's additional. Uh, in a three blade, the base price, so it goes from 850 in the two blade to 1175 uh, currently. Um, and the four blade uh, adds a couple hundred dollars onto that. Uh, but that's newer and for different applications. And so, uh, yeah, those are the base prices. Uh, the nickel adds $110 per blade, and the taper adds 90 per blade. Uh, and painted tips are 45 a blade. So. Do you also offer, as part of a kit or a complete package, the uh, spinner and crush plate, or is that up to the airframe manufacturer, kit manufacturer, to supply that? Yes, we offer everything that you would need to get the complete package. So we've got spinners in different diameters, all the, in the Rotax market, all the lengths of 8 millimeter mounting bolts, uh, prop extensions, yes, crush plates, um, what you need to, to make it what you want. Uh, we get a lot of demand for the old aluminum skull cap spinners, uh, and we don't have a source for those, unfortunately, at this time. Uh, but for, for tractor configurations, we've got what you would need. 
And uh, I also asked him earlier, because I ran into this situation with my engine. Um, somebody ran a really big, heavy prop, and it kind of puts some stress on the gearbox. I'm running a, a Rotax. Um, what information do people need to bring to you other than their engine and engine size to make sure that the inertia weight is correct for their engine and your prop? Yeah, really, it's gearbox specs. So uh, you call us with engine, make, and model. Uh, what model gearbox and the ratio that's inside, and we know the Rotax specifications, um, and we can we can meet those if the customer wants to. If the customer, uh, you know, we aren't the police, and we don't force you to buy anything or hold you back if you want to do something that's uh, not approved by the book. Experimental. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but in this case, if you go experimental, you might be rebuilding your gearbox sooner than later. But some guys have an application where they don't care. Right, they're doing what they want to do, and if they need to buy some parts along the way, they had fun doing it, uh, and so we let them do it. All right. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, kind of tour us what your offerings are here. Where can everybody find you online, and if they want to maybe even show up at your your door and see you in person? Sure. Yeah, uh, it's Warp Drive Inc. That's WarpDriveInc.com. Uh, we're out of Iowa, uh, American company. We're here at booth 905, 906 at AirVenture, um, and yeah. All our, all our stuff's online. Uh, we pick up the phone when you call. That's a good thing. I know. <laughs> Something that should be easy to do these days, but uh, unfortunately doesn't happen all the time. Yep.